Madison, welcome back up. Thanks for being here. Thanks. 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 Charlie Madison and I truly appreciate you and spend a bit more time with us today. So thanks. And we just arrived at 60,000 subscribers, which is overwhelming, truly, from the bottom of my something. Now with this landmark moment for arriving at 60,000 subscribers, I just released the Advocate Masterclass over at our website. I'll leave a link in this video description. I wanted to use this video to talk about the Advocate itself. I'll explain a little bit more about it in a few moments. We're gonna go back in time. We're gonna go back to 2012 where I was invited to spend some time in Portugal with the world's greatest magicians. I had to do a performance in front of them that was broadcast all over the world and I chose to show everybody the advocate. So get yourself a deck of playing cards, get a cup of tea if you want, get comfy. We're gonna go back in time to 2012, back to the EMC. I'm Daniel Madison and this is The Advocate. So I've got the video open in front of me, we're going to watch it together and I'm going to pause it a few times along the way to explain to you exactly how I achieve the Advocate with the Four of Spades. The Advocate, it's in my pocket right now, it's in my left pocket. It is a full deck, single pocket playing card index, nothing added, it's just a deck of playing cards, I've done something to it which makes it the advocate, it sits in my left pocket. This device allows me to be secretly within possession of any freely named playing card within moments. Susan Sausage names a playing card. Susan, please name any playing card. I stand back, she names a playing card with nothing other than my left thumb. I am able to get access to, secret access to, any single playing card in the deck and then within moments have that playing card in a gambler's cop, a classic palm, in various different palms at which point I can do whatever I want with this all I need is my left thumb, my left thumb does everything so standing like this I have access to every single playing card in the deck and nobody is any the wiser without further ado, let's watch the video Introduction. Um, I often find it very unfair to call myself um, a magician or why I do magic um, and that's because my obsessions are with um, sleight of hand and technique and method um, so I, I get very little satisfaction out of, out of the, the reactions of, of spectators I get more satisfaction out of knowing that I've done something invisible right in front of them without them knowing um, and because I'm here at the EMC, I've decided to take one of So I'm gonna, I'm gonna pause it just there, just so you know the setting. I'm in this huge studio in Portugal, the EMC studio, owned by Luis de Matos. Luis, thank you for letting me use this video as well. And David Brutland, what an amazing event you both put together, it was incredible. It was Luis's studio in Portugal, Studio 33. And he invited all the world's greatest magicians to come along for this conference. And I'm, I'm fortunate to have been one of those people invited there and then. I was really nervous. I was sat with people like uh, David Blaine, Paul Daniels, David Berglas, Bill Kalush was sat next to me, Guy Hornworth, the list goes on. Even Dynamo was there. 
Charlie, that's just rude, man. That's just rude. But yeah, so that's this setting. That's that's the people in front of me. I remember being really nervous, but I remember having to impress, wanting to really impress my peers. So you can kind of see how nervous I was. By the way, I'm holding the mug. This is the very mug from EMC. So this is my mug. Everybody got their own mug. And the idea was cup, should I say, it's a cup. They got their own cup to put on the tables in front of them. So it became kind of a name placeholder. So, you know, in case you didn't know who you were talking to or who people were. So this was mine. I treasure this, I've treasured it since. It's in the background of most of my videos. Um, I wanted to hold dynamos as a bit of a joke, as a bit of a nod, because we're both from Bradford. We both kind of came into magic together, um, but his wasn't there. So I ended up using Luis de Matos, his cup. Um, but I'm using it for a reason. I am kind of holding it for a reason, which we'll get to in a second. So back to the video. Take one of those uh, obsessions of mine and, and try and make it more magical, just so that I can feel more part of, of the EMC. So um, I'm gonna show you a card trick. Um, for this, I need to pause to the point. The reason why I paused it in the first place, I'm, I made that statement. I mentioned that I'm, I was never really interested in, in trying to get a crowd to go, ah! I was never really into getting Susan Sausage to react accordingly until like recently. I do understand the value of it, of course I do, but my focus, my attention has always been on the ability to achieve deception secretively right in front of somebody without them knowing like you can do a deck switch right in front of somebody and they don't know about it the feeling that you get from that is so much bigger than susan sausage going and falling to the ground you know what i mean at least for me so i mentioned that on here because because of my situation because of i always was a gambler a card cheat demonstrator so most of the people there didn't really understand why I was at a magic convention. So this is kind of one of those moments where I started to apply the techniques that I'd learned at the card table to magic tricks. So I, that was kind of me setting everybody up, especially for those people in the room who were like, who the F swear word is this mother F -er? I almost actually swore then, Charlie. I do apologize. Back to the video. For this, I need two things. Um, I'm gonna choose somebody who's here now. Um, uh, Mr. Graham Jolly, can you help me? Uh, you don't have to, you can stay where you are. Um, just, just name out loud any, any playing card. Uh, just name it out. In fact, um, do you mind if we do it with someone else? Because I mean, I've, I've spent a lot of time with you this weekend and um, I don't want you to think that I've influenced you, do you know? And I don't want especially people watching to think that, you know, there's something going on. Uh, can, you, can you pick somebody else here? You just name anybody here and we'll use them. This was unnecessary, I think, looking back. I don't think I needed to do this. Graham Jolly, I'd spent most of my weekend with him. We got on so well. He's an incredible magician. And uh, we were a real unlikely couple. I was this young, young thug and he was this old gentleman. He sat next to David Burglass. So and when I looked over, I wanted to pick David Burglass really because it was kind of, it, the index also offers my solution and my answer to any card or any number and he's the any card or any number guy but when I looked over I realized he was a little bit older a little bit I, I didn't want to put him on the spot in a situation where he would be going what what <laughs> that sounds really awful but but I, I wanted to be careful with my selection and then when I took when I chose Graham a familiar face I thought oh no everybody's gonna think that we're in on it together because I've spent so much time with him so nervously I go oh in fact no not you don't you name a card choose someone else to name a card and then he goes and chooses a friend of mine David Blaine so I, I went from a bad situation to a worse one because people know that I know David so it wasn't too much of a surprise for them when they chose David then it felt staged it all of a sudden felt staged when it really wasn't David Blaine. Okay. Um, uh, David. <laughs> you can see the, the <laughs> you can see my my heart fall apart a bit when I go name name another person. I'm pretty jolly, and then he says uh, David Blaine, and I'm like, oh, f f f really, David Blaine? Oh God! All right, come on. I felt at that point like I couldn't then say David. Now you pick somebody else because it would have been non-stop. Okay. Um, 
Uh, David, can, can you just, um, can you name out loud any playing card so that everybody can hear what, what card it is? Any playing card? Four of spades. The, the Four of Spades? Yeah. Okay. Um, so the Four of Spades from David Blaine. I need somebody who, um, who's willing to help me who's got a deck of playing cards that I can use that, that's a regular deck of playing cards that's not in any way gimmicked, um, that they don't mind shuffling. If you have that, can you uh, hold your hand in the... Uh, Steve, do you mind? So looking back on this now, I would have performed this so much different, so much different, but I do remember having a time limit, like the trick had to be up to five minutes long. For me, this trick can be done within a minute and it could have the highest impact. And that's not even rushed, that's taking time. So me buying myself a lot of time here, um, I did, the whole point of the advocate, the index, is that the magician is hands off. It looks like, it feels like, the illusion is that the participant, that the audience has full, complete control over the playing cards and freedom with the playing cards, complete freedom, and we have no control whatsoever. That's the illusion of it. That's what sells this. That's what makes this real magic. So me thinking too far outside of the box back in 2012 meant that I had to have a completely random person name a card. I had to have a complete random deck of playing cards borrowed from somebody in the audience. It all bought time and it all looked more and more impossible. I thought that was, that was my way of thinking. So when people put their hands up, I'm at a magic convention. I'm surrounded by magicians. So when I say, anybody got a deck of playing cards? And my point was, anybody got a deck of playing cards that they don't mind shuffling. How many people put their hands up? Everybody. <laughs> so when Steve Cohen, Steve Cohen, by the way, is incredible. He showed me this incredible trick with a, a huge brick. I won't get into it. When Steve Cohen put his hand up, he put his hand up really fast and I got the, I got his attention. He got my attention and I realized he really wants to be a part of this. This is really cool. And I have a lot of admiration for Steve as well. So when I saw Steve, I was like, oh good. Somebody is not gonna mess with me as well. Because if I'd have chose David Williamson, he would have probably tried to mess it up. And he was sat next to him. So I'm like, yep, Steve, come up, come and join me. Uh, Steve, do you, mind, do you mind helping me? Um, if you can take the cards out of the, um, out of the box and give the, give the deck a thorough shuffle for me, please. Okay. And um, you can put the, the deck down once you're done. So, so the deck is yours. And David Blaine, you named the, the, the four spades, right? Um, you know what, I don't, I don't want to do this because it, 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 seems, it feels unfair if I do things, right? Now, if we analyze this, what just happened, everything that just happened on that table, you clearly, from our point of view, from a magician's point of view, we clearly see what I did. So by the time it, that Steve put his hand up and, and he had some, deck, some playing cards, I knew the four of spades. I knew that I had to go to my index and find the four of spades. So first of all, between the time between choosing David Blaine and finding his playing card, I now mentally know where that playing card is in the index. So I'm going through it in my mind, the actions that my left thumb have to do to find the four spade. So I'm, I'm going over it in my mind so that when I come to it, I don't really have to think about it. Now there's a time when I say, name any, um, hold your hand up if you have a deck of playing cards that I can use. This is me buying time. So when everybody looks over at Steve, one of the reasons I chose Steve as well, because he was sat far enough away for his journey to take the same amount of time that it takes me to get the four of spades out of the index. So it's very strategic. If I'd have chose somebody stood sat really close, then it probably, I wouldn't have had enough time. So I bought myself time so that when everybody now looks over at Steve Cohen, I have the cup in one hand, I'm holding on to this empty cup, which again, we'll get to. As soon as everybody looks over to him and I say, can you come and join us? My hand goes to my pocket and I do the work. So he's walking his journey. I'm with my left thumb. I'm finding the four spades in the index. I'm lifting it out into a gambler's cop. So I now have the four spades in a gambler's cop. I have the cup in this hand too. This allows me the freedom to have the cup passed over into this hand maybe and into this hand. It looks like it gives the illusion, the impression that both hands are empty. It allows me to hide a playing card in front of a, a room full of magicians who will be looking at my hands. So I move the cup into this hand. The cup, 
the psychological chicanery, the, the psychological trick of the cup. Everybody in the room thinks the cup's a part of it. The cup is an integral part of it, but it has nothing to do with the reveal. So after the trick, when we realize at this point that the cup has nothing to do with it, people realize, ah, that was just misdirection. So the cup was actually misdirection. And it's the simplest, the simplest form of misdirection possible. Now I usually say, don't try to misdirect people, try to direct their attention. I believe that this, the cup idea, is somewhere between the two ideas. It's somewhere between me directing your attention. So I say, you have to look at this cup. But it's also misdirection because the playing cards are in use at the same time. So it allows me to move a few things at once. So if you look back at this scene, if we move it back, if you look at the scene, you can see me loading the four of spades underneath. So I load the four of spades underneath a foreign deck. What I mean by that, the pink playing card has come from my index. Steve's deck, let's say this one's white. So I load the four of spades inside a white deck. I then cut it in the middle and put it back down on the table. So now the situation is this, a white deck with a pink four spades in the middle, a stranger card. So his playing cards, I believe at the moment, at the time I was using a stinger deck. So I was using a black white deck and Steve had, when he held the deck up, I saw that he had a red bicycle deck, a variation bicycle, I think it was a fan back. So I knew that it would stand out, the white and black in the red deck. Another important thing to note for this kind of trick, if you're gonna be doing this kind of trick. So when you look at me at that moment, the way I move things around, I take the deck from the table to mention it. At that point, I load the card, let's use the white deck. At that point, when I lift it up to mention it, and I say shuffle, whatever I say, I load the card on top in a very natural moment, underneath, I'm sorry, in a very natural moment, it goes from here to here as I'm talking to him. Notice my body language is all up, all looking at Steve, all kind of my head's up here, not down here. Don't look at your own deception. Never look at your own deception. So I do this. At this point, I just simply cut it into the middle, put the deck back down, and then I create some distance between me and the deck. So if you notice, I put the deck very close to Steve, and then I stand pretty far back. This distance between me and the deck creates an illusion in the memory when people try and backtrack, when people try and work it out. They, they think back and they realize Madison was stood over to the side of the, side of the table, Steve did all the work. When really that's all it took me to load the card on the bottom, cut the deck. So many people ask me at this point, why did you, how did you get the card into the middle of the deck, like at that moment? Did you do a classic pass? Did you do a move? And the answer is no. I simply load it to the bottom and then cut the deck before I put it down. If I load the card to the bottom of the deck and then do this, the classic pass can be seen. There's no such thing as a classic pass. There's no such thing as an, an invisible deceptive method at that very moment. So doing this is as natural and as human as I can possibly be without trying to hide anything. And because it looks so natural and so human, nobody cares, nobody looks at it, nobody thinks about it. Because if I did this, then you're clearly I did something. Whereas if I just take the deck and just do this, then I didn't do anything. It didn't serve a purpose. It didn't have a service to the trick, apparently. With all that being said, we now have, I now have the four of spades in the middle of Steve Cohen's deck that he's just brought to the table and shuffled that I've never seen before. I touched it for two seconds, three seconds, four seconds, I don't know. And now it's back to Steve. If I do things right. So um, can, do you mind doing this for me? All you need to do, um, just slowly spread the cards across the table. Can you see this? So this is, um, this is the borrowed deck. Um, it's a freely named playing card from, from David. And you named the four of the four spades. Um, I want you to do this, look. Just turn this card over. Thank you very much. I think a little bit of nervousness got, got in the way. I think a little bit of nerve stepped in on that moment where it should have been Steve doing everything. He spread the cards and I really wanted the cameras to be able to see 
the the um, the contrast, the difference. See that playing card. But the cameras couldn't really get that close. So I thought to myself, before Steve pulls the card out and reveals it, I want it to be clearly seen. So I should have asked Steve to do the bit where you move the cards and see it because I didn't remain hands off. I should have done. Um, but we learn, I learned so much from this video. So then he turns the card over, a stranger card in his deck, in a borrowed shuffled deck, was a card that was freely named by David Blaine. A mini miracle. I think at the end, the, it, because it wasn't presented really as a trick, it was more about a slight presentation. And I liked the idea of kind of stepping back and letting, and without saying, without being that queen, that guy saying, and the playing card in the deck is the Four of Spades. Ah! And because I was surrounded by people I really looked up to and admired, I think I played it down intentionally so much, like as if no big deal, you know, uh, I made this happen. Um, afterwards, it was afterwards, a few minutes after when that, that film stopped, where everyone around started going, they so we got the round of applause and it's like, hold on. Actually, that's actually impossible. So people were like, "What? wait, Steve, stop, Steve. You were in on that. And he was like, nope, promise, this is my deck. No, I wasn't in there. Wait, Graham, you were in on that. Nope, David, you were in on that. No, the closest thing any, anybody could get before I revealed how I did it, because they didn't know what I was doing. They didn't know it was an index. The closest thing that they could get to was that the Four of Spades is David Blaine's favorite playing card, which it is. It's his favorite playing card. It's Devil's Bedpost. It's position 44. People will know what that means. It's his favorite playing card. So people thought, I just knew what it was. So I just had the Four of Spades on me. So that I had to rely on him saying it. If he didn't say it, I would have done a different trick. That's what people thought. When I went backstage at that point to prepare to come back to teach it, because I did teach it after this fact, after this moment. Uh, Max Maven was there. He was the compare, he was the host. And, and backstage when I was in that between moment, he was like, I know what you had to have done to have achieved that. There's only one answer but I didn't see it, and that's where the magic is. Uh, you didn't go to your pocket for a second. That's what makes this real special, real magic. And it's all thanks to the development of being able to just use my left thumb. The devil makes work of idle thumbs. You stand back, you put your thumb in your pocket, and your thumb has access to every single playing card. In the deck, any single playing card that's freely named in the deck. I think at this moment it's important, now that you know exactly what went on, now, exact, now that you know exactly what happened, what my method was, that we watched the video from start to finish, uninterrupted, and then I want to talk to you a little bit afterwards about the effect itself. That was a lovely introduction. Um, I often find it very unfair to call myself um, a magician, or why I do magic. Um, and that's because my obsessions are with um, sleight of hand and technique and method. Um, so I, I get very little satisfaction out of, out of the, the reactions of, of spectators. I get more satisfaction out of knowing that I've done something invisible right in front of them without them knowing. Um, and because I'm here at the EMC, I've decided to take one of those uh, obsessions of mine and, and try and make it more magical just so that I can feel more part of, of the EMC. So um, I'm going to show you a card trick. Um, for this, I need two things. Um, I'm going to choose somebody who's here now. Um, uh, Mr. Graham Jolly. Can you help me? Uh, you don't have to. You can stay where you are. Um, just, just name out loud any, any playing card. Uh, just name it out. In fact, um, <laughs> Do you mind if we do it with someone else? Because I mean, I've, I've spent a lot of time with you this weekend, and um, I don't want you to think that I've influenced you, do you know? And I don't want especially people watching to think that, you know, there's something going on. Uh, can, you, can you pick somebody else here? You just name anybody here, and we'll use them. David Blaine? OK. Um, uh, David, can, can you just, um, can you name out loud any playing card so that everybody can hear what, what card it is? Any playing card? Four of spades. The, the Four of Spades? Yeah. Okay. Um, so the Four of Spades from David Blaine. I need somebody who, um, who's willing to help me who's got a deck of playing cards that I can use that, that's a regular deck of playing cards that's not in any way gimmicked. 
um, that they don't mind shuffling. If you have that, can you uh, hold your hand? In the, uh, Steve, do you mind? Do you mind helping me? Um, if you can take the cards out of the um, out of the box and give the give the deck a thorough shuffle for me, please. And um, you can put the, the deck down once you're done. So, so the deck is yours. And David Blaine, you named the, the, the four spades, right? Um, you know what, I don't, I don't want to do this because it, 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 seems un it feels unfair if I do things, right? So um, can, do you mind doing this for me? All you need to do, um, just slowly spread the cards across the table. Can you see this? So this is, um, this is a borrowed deck. Um, it's a freely named playing card from, from David. And you named the four of the four spades. Um, I want you to do this, look. Just turn this card over. Thank you very much. Now I've been a consultant, advisor, mentor, guide in the world of magic and deceptive practices, usually typically but not always specifically with playing cards. My, student, my students and the people I've worked with, the people I've helped, TV shows and things like that, most people that I interact with and try to teach, almost every one of them ends up with an advocate index in their pocket. David Blaine uses one to this day. From the moment I showed it to him, he uses it to this day. All my friends use them. I don't take credit. I don't take full credit for the, the advocate. My development of the pocket index, I believe, is the, the one thing that I'm most proud of in my career is how I developed the pocket index. But the idea of a pocket index doesn't belong to me. It's, it's years and years old, it's way older than me. It's way older than anybody watching this video, but my development of it, that's kind of what I take pride in and what I take credit for. I assure you, anyone watching this who hasn't found out, who hasn't discovered what the advocate is yet, when you do, just like me, you will not leave home without it. This isn't an, an advertisement. It's not me trying to give you a product endorsement or trying to force you into buying my product. I don't care. My whole goal, my whole aim in magic, the reason I give everything that I do away, almost everything for free on YouTube, I want to further the magic industry. I want to shape the future of the magic industry in the way that we learn magic. It has to be fair. And the tricks that I learn on, the card tricks and the magic that I develop, what use is it if it's stuck with me? I want people out there to take what I've developed, to take what I've created and make it their own and use it. We're all in this together. We're all in magic together. Magic belongs to us. So we owe it to each other to be helpful, to help guide the shape of magic, to help guide the image of it. Magic is not a competitive world. I don't go near magicians. I don't really spend time with magicians. I spend time with people. The magicians that I do surround myself with me are because I like them as people first, because I get on with them as people first and we just happen to do magic. Any magician or any magic place out there, any community, any websites, any forums that share and spread negativity, you'll find that that's what most of them do, but you can find good people, you can find good magicians. My aim is to help guide and shape the future of magic to be a beautiful thing. We can do that, we can do that, we can make it a very positive place. And I hope that me sharing what I share on YouTube is doing that, is, is leading magic into the best possible direction. That's what I'm here for, and I'm sorry to go on by it, it's something that I'm really passionate about. Um, but yeah, if you wanna pick up the Advocate Masterclass, it's five hours long, it took me a hell of a long time, and it's in my personal Masterclass library over at my website. For all my lovely viewers, for all my madbookets out there, I'm going to give you a discount code. If you want to go pick it up, you'll be supporting me, you'll be supporting this channel. The discount code, I love Susan Sausage. <laughs> uh, I'll leave a, a link in this video description. Go check it out. Uh, I will be back very soon. I have this wonderful thing that I can't wait to show you. It uses this. Um, Anybody take any guesses, uh, guesses are more than welcome. I'm so excited. This is next up.
once I've done this video, I'm gonna get onto this and teach you this wonderful thing. So stay close, make sure you subscribe so you get my notification bell going every time I drop a new tutorial. I'm Daddy Madison, that's Charlie Madison. See you next time.